let's jump in straight away. Um, this book here. Oops, we're going to get we're getting kind of light on here. Let me do it like that. So um, full disclosure, the publisher sent me this book. It's called Jelly Arts Printing Guide. It's by Suzanne McNeil. Many of you probably know her. She's done lots of different craft guides, including um, quite a few Zentangle ones. But I don't even just see that. Suzanne McNeil. It's a little book. It's like seven inches across by like, oh, I don't know. Let me just check. Let me measure it on my thing. Seven inches across by like nine inches high. It's a little book. It's quite thin. It's like 88 pages. And when I first received it, um, I looked through it and I thought, oh, this is really, really basic. And I was kind of a little bit disappointed. But when I started to re-go really through it, um, it was indeed very basic. But actually, the more I thought about it, the more I liked that. Um, I don't know about you, but I, I follow several people on YouTube and um, Instagram, like Bridget Cooperson and Carolyn Doobie and a bunch of other people. And I love, love, love all the techniques they do. Um, they're wonderful. Absolutely amazing and inspiring. However, having all the basic techniques in one book is actually really, really nice. Just to see them kind of laid out. So let me give you an example. Um, so the first um, 20 or 17 pages are just um, some inspiration. And then up until page 50, which is probably half of the book, it's all these basic techniques. So for example, Printing with found objects, making marks with a plastic card, uh, recipes for making your own jelly plate, that's not so basic, um, watercolour techniques, making textures with your brayer, um, making your own, own roller stamps, um, making your own foam stamps with hot glue, layering colours and textures, how to line things up, like do registration. So all of this information is out there, I know, on YouTube, on Instagram and much, much more. But to be honest, to have it right here in this one little book is actually really, really helpful. So I would really recommend this. And it's in, it's $15 in the US. So it's really not bad. Mickey will pop a link in. And then um, towards the end, if you're on here live, you have a chance to uh, win this. So I'm going to keep my copy, actually. I was going to send this to the winner. I'm actually going to keep it because I really, really like it. Um, so I will send via Amazon a copy to the winner wherever you live. Um, all right, I'm just seeing. I'm glad you could join us too, Beth. Um, so yes, I would really recommend this book. And then the second half of the book from page 50 onwards is projects, which I have to say I don't love so much. Um, but they're, they're kind of interesting, you know, printing up, making greeting cards or um, making some abstract collage or making a, a bag. I'm not sure, you know, for this crowd, that's necessarily what we would be looking for. But honestly, the techniques in here are really, really excellent. And um, it's a really nice book. And um, one of the techniques that sort of jogged, well, it, it jogged my memory for a technique that I have used before um, was to make stencils and masks with Tyvek. So Tyvek, so let me just set this aside so we don't get dirty. Tyvek is a man-made substance. You can actually see it's um, like plastic fibers almost. I'm not entirely sure what it's made out, but it's made of like plastic fibers. Um, and they're often um, envelopes made from it, really sturdy envelopes, and um, they wrap it around houses and use it for many other things. The nice thing is you can't tear it very well. Well, I can't tear it. So it's very thin, um, which is also really nice for making stencils um, and masks and, and many other things too. We use it for lots of other things. But um, so that's what I'm gonna show you how to make today. Um, like I say, it's it's in Suzanne's book, and I'm going to kind of show you my technique of how I use photographs to um, make the stencils with this. Actually, we're going to be working with masks rather than stencils today. But um, are there any questions? Ah, so Teresa says she needs that uh, book because she's had the jelly plate for months and months and not used it. Yeah, actually, and what made me think of this as well is someone did email me at the, the um, beginning of the month because in the book club of this month, I made a book which used jelly prints and someone said, well, great, but how do you do that? And I forget sometimes and everyone has done jelly printing. So um, if you are new to jelly printing, 
you'll need a jelly plate and you can purchase them or you can um, make your own. I've made my own once. That was plenty. Thank you very much. Um, a jelly plate. There are a couple different um, manufacturers. I don't think there's jelly art. So this one called gel press. I, I don't really think there's much difference. Mickey will pop a link in. Um, but just you can search for it anywhere and you'll find them. They're not inexpensive, um, but they come in different sizes. Um, I like the 8x10. Uh, they also have round ones and shaped ones and like small 4x6 and 5x7, which are also really, really fun because then you can print directly with them into your art journal. Um, so you'll need the gel plate. Um, one thing to remember, keep it inside its clamshell when you're not using it, otherwise it dries out. Um, you will need a brayer. grab a brayer from my new uh, pegboard. Thank you, Mickey Soliday. You need a brayer. I like the hard ones. Um, you can also use a rubber one. This this is a rubber one. Um, you can use different sizes. Um, I quite like this one. I think it's about four inches. This is a smaller one. I use this small one for the small um, jelly plates. And you will need paint. Um, any kind of paint is great, acrylic paint. You can also use watercolors too, and some people use um, ink as well, like the Distress inks, but I just use paint. Um, I use, this is my favorite brand. Oops, can you see it? <laughs> the Golden Open Acrylics is my favorite brand um, because it's highly pigmented. It is expensive, but it um, it's highly pigmented, the Golden brand, and so a little goes a long way. And it has open written on it, and that means it has a longer drying time. But honestly, use what you have. Like jelly printing is great for using up sort of any acrylic paints that you have. So, you know, there's cheap ones that you get from Michaels for a dollar or, you know, on sale for three for a dollar. Use up those. You can use the big uh, the tubes like at the Liquitex or any other brand. I use all kinds, um, but these are just my favorites. And um, it's good for doing demos live because then it doesn't dry too quickly. Um, and then I like to put my um, jelly plate on these uh, acrylic, well, they're like um, plexiglass, pieces of plexiglass. They're probably, that's probably 16 by 16. Um, you can also put it on a piece of freezer paper as well. I just like to, because it's sticky, I like to put it on like a non-stick surface. So I like to have two of these. I have one for rolling out paint and I have one for my jelly plate. So um, these aren't necessary. Um, you could just, like I say, use freezer paper or pallet paper. Um, if you have a suggestion, pop it in the comments. Oh, yes, Joanne says stamp pads work. Yes, the Distress Oxides work nicely, especially when you can spritz them with water. I like using those. Um, Pat says, by bread, do I mean roller? Yes, I think in the UK, you might call these rollers. Um, but yes, brayer or a roller. This is a speed ball, but there's plenty of different kinds. All right, I'm going to flip the camera around. Let's put this out of the way. Let's put an apron because I'm always messy. So I'm going to use a photograph to create my masks. So I'll just grab those up right behind me. We'll flip the camera around in one second. I had my lipstick here or my chapstick ready to put on and I forgot. There we go. Um, it's real and live, folks. <laughs> I don't pretend it's anything else. Um, so I printed this photograph on just my computer. So it's of some water lilies. So I, I think I took it with a, a decent camera and then I zoomed in and I increased the contrast. So I've got these um, shapes. So these happen to be water lilies and uh, a couple of water lily like buds. Um, so I'm going to use these. What I'm going to do is uh, glue, gently glue this down to my Tyvek with some glue stick and then cut it out and use this as a mask. And also I could use it as a stencil. So here are the ones I, I've been using before. So here are these. So there's the shape. I've used these a lot. Like I've, I've made these... Uh, about a year ago and I've used them a lot. So this is, um, this will be the mask and this would be the stencil. See? 
So, um, and you can see on the back, it's a recycled envelope. So um, you can also purchase Tyvek, just why, when you can recycle an envelope. So let's flip things around, folks. Let's see. I'm literally right next to myself. I'm going to be right here. Oops, I'm going to be right here. But we have to flip the camera around. If you have any questions, let me know. Ooh, uh, Pat is north of Boston. Excellent. Sorry, I'm just, I gotta, I gotta focus on what I'm doing, right? Camera. Okay, there we go. Hopefully that's good. I'm gonna, let's hit focus. There we are. All right, my friends. First of all, let's create that mask. This is my recycled envelope. Okay, this is embarrassing, but I can't find my glue stick. We forgot to label that draw Mickey, so I, have to, I was searching for my glue stick. Just a cheap and cheerful glue stick. So last week, you know, most of you know, because I can't stop talking about it, Mickey was here and she went round and labeled all my drawers for me and all the plastic tubs, which is wonderful. Bring the microphone a bit closer, which was wonderful. So I feel very organized. And I'm also very sad because she went home. Hello, I see lots of people saying hello. So I'm just going to cut out one. Set the others aside. So um, you could use spray adhesive too if you wanted to. And this is, um, I don't use this in my journaling or when I'm making books because um, when it's colored, it... Um, is acidic, but I just use them for projects like this because, um, you know, it's from Target, and I, I believe I got it when it was on sale um, during uh, back to school. So, to be honest, I would probably use a knife to cut this out. Um, I'd probably use a sharp knife. I'm not going to do that right now, though, because, you know, I'll just mess it up on camera. I'd probably go in, not with this, I'd probably go in with an X-Acto knife with a very, um, with a tapered blade and cut this out really carefully. Um, particularly if I wanted to use it as a stencil, but as I'm just using it as a mask, it doesn't really matter. And I would, um, I would take a lot of time to do this and make sure I, you know, Cut out any holes in the middle if there are any, and but I'm going to do it quickly here because I'm sure you don't need to see me cut this out. If you um, already have a jelly plate, let me know in the comments what size is your favourite. I'm always curious. I have one of the really big ones, but I, I rarely use it because it's just so huge. Okay. Here we go. And then when I finish doing this, I will remove it from the, I'll remove the paper from the Tyvek. I'm trying to do it quickly so the glue stick doesn't dry. There we go. So I think you get the idea, folks. Cutting out these little masks. So um, I do these using photographs, but you could also, which is also kind of fun. So then I'm going to very carefully, I'm not going to do this on camera, take the glass off, um, very carefully remove this paper so that we have a Tyvek mask. Oh, hold on. Maybe I can. Here we go. There we are. So I can discard this, put that in the trash. And then here I have my, my mask. 
not that great. Um, another thing I really like to do is, I don't like to waste any of this, is to create just um, kind of rough shapes like circles and things. So you don't have to use a photograph. You could make sort of organic shapes like this. Even make a kind of long thin pieces like this. That would be kind of fun. Long thin strips, geometric shapes. Could also make organic shapes too. Like that. Like the world your oyster. And don't don't waste don't waste any of this. Just use a little piece like that. So you get the idea. But for me, I'm using these ones from, um, get rid of that, from a photograph. Put those to one side. Here are the ones that I was talking about earlier. These have been well loved. Let me just check the comments. What's a mask? So a stencil is this, where you remove the image or the shape, creating this um, positive shape here. So if I put um, paint in here, this would be a positive shape. When something's a mask like this, we put it down and we put paint around it, it creates a negative shape. So that's a mask and the mask kind of masks off the area. You'll, you'll see um, in a second how that looks. Here's the um, little buds as well. So I'm not going to use these stencils today. I'm going to set those aside. But we're going to use these guys. So I mentioned, you can see, I've made the right mess here. I'm going to make some space. So as I mentioned, this is from the, this technique is included in the Suzanne McNeil book. Hopefully you can see this all okay. I'm trying to line everything up. Here's my gel plate. It's an 8 by 10 It's by Gel Press. Let me flip the camera around. Is that right? There we go. That's better. I believe I got this from Dick Blit. It's kind of loud, sorry. So this is the clamshell. I also keep it between the two original pieces of plastic that it comes with. This is a nice clean one. Um, it's from when I did classes. Um, normally my gel plate is like a mess. So I really do want this centered on here. And then I usually have this one to the side for paint. Let's push that over there. Here are my paints. So when I... Let me show you an example of some of the prints I've made. I did these yesterday. Hopefully the light isn't too bright. Go. So this is me layering up the different masks. Some are more prominent than others. So in each of these, there is about three to four layers of paint and I'll show you how I create this, create these. But I know for a fact that you will also create fabulous ones yourselves. Yeah. So the paper I'm using today is just straight copy of paper. Uh, I think this one here was some mixed media paper I had lying around, but I'm literally going to use copy of paper today. Straight, cheap and cheerful copy of paper. So I start out by doing a light layer of colour. So I'm just going to put this straight on here. Very light layer of colour with a little bit of texture. So I just like to give myself, put the paint straight on there and then I like to go in one direction. So it gets the paint on fairly evenly. It's not super even, but that's okay. I also like to have some baby wipes to hand to clean up if I need to. And then I keep one sheet right here for rolling off my paint. And then I could just print this just to give myself a base color or I could add a little bit of texture. So um, 
you can use some found objects to make texture. Why don't you pop in the comments what found objects you like to um, use? Like I know some people like bubble wrap, some people like cardboard. For me, I'm a real big fan of plastic bags. I don't know why, I just love plastic bags. So I like crinkling them up. And then just laying down some texture like this. So yeah, let me know what your favorite um, found objects are. That just creates some texture. Straight copy of paper, lay it on the top, rub it with your hands. We've got a nice, just a basic background to start with. Let's do one more. See, so the colors I'm using, this is a Titan, Titan Green Pale. This one here was hence a yellow light. I know you're gonna ask me what they are. They're just light colors. Don't get too hung up on what the colors are. They're just light. Light, light, light. Oops. <laughs> I put a tiny bit of yellow in there too. So remember, I'm just doing a, a basic background layer. A pale, pale color. And then we'll um, use our Tyvek masks. So the reason I'm doing this is I don't want the paint to um, dry on here. Let's use this again. So I'm gonna use my plastic bag this time. I'm gonna runch it up like that. And it helps. Make it slightly different. Like that. Let's do another background. You look at your comments. Mesh bags some onions, I love it. Cassette tape, says Liz, and LPs. Are you kidding me? Plastic forks. Onion and potato bags. I love it. Oh, Melissa says there are tins for storing jelly plates. Who knew? Corrugated cardboard. I love it. Honestly, like um, once you start jelly printing, the world never quite looks the same because um, you're just seeing textures everywhere. Okay, so another light background. So then I'm going to take my Tyvek masks. They're a bit um, delicate, but they don't, well, I could probably rip that because it's quite delicate, but they, um, honestly, these have lasted over a year and I've used them multiple times and I'll show you a little book I made with them too. Um, let's do a middle color now. So let's do, um, what colors do we have? Let's do, um, a maple yellow. Oops, it's probably a bit too much. Let's do maple yellows. Yeah, Naple yellows, <laughs> and this is a transparent yellow oxide. Let's do that. I'll show you in a minute how I mix my colors on um, the piece of plexi as well. So this is, you know, a lightish mid-tone color. I don't like the way that has it rubbed in. Let's just lay these puppies down. Lay them down whichever way you like. I like to um, sort of lay them so they go off the edge and go in different directions. There's the one we just made. Um, if you want to, you could always use tweezers with these. Just uh, be careful that you don't make holes in your jelly plate. You don't want to damage your jelly plate because they're expensive. Lay these puppies down. I might just do a couple of these buds that I did. Um, let's put that there. Okay. Lay down, my friend, lay down. Okay, so, no, lay down. I'm going to use one of these. Or I could just do one on a plain piece, but I'm going to use my light colored ones. Lay that on top. Now, I'm not doing any kind of registration, but you could. And the um, that, that book I showed you shows you how to do registration. So you can see, you can see the masks coming through here. And I'm giving it a really good rub. I'm sort of rubbing around those masks. And when we pull it up, you will see the negative space created by these shapes. Okay. 
there's that blob of paint I didn't like. So there's a negative space created by our water lily shapes. So I'm going to, before I do, uh, before I remove these, I'm just going to get off the excess paint with a, another piece, a white piece, which I'll probably use later. Let me see if there are any questions. I don't think so. Can you speak about registration? Uh, <laughs> I thought someone would ask me that. So there are several different ways to do that. I find the easiest way is to put the size paper underneath here with my acrylic, um, my plexi, um, piece of plexiglass. I place my, um, so say it's eight and a half by 11. I, I take this down to my table. I lay this on top and, and tape it in place. And then every time I lay down my, um, piece of paper to print, I line up the corners. But there are tons of different ways to do registration. Some people sort of flip it back and forth with um, tape. Okay, so that's just um, some extra paint that we'll use maybe later. Let's remove these. So because they're plastic, they're not gonna rip. I mean, you have to be careful. But you see now we've got these positive shapes here. And we can pop them on another. I'm going to put them on the second um, print that I did. I remember this one? It was first or the second, can't remember. Lay this down on top. So if I was doing registration, I would line up this corner with a mark underneath my plate. There we are. So now, oh, it's very pale. You can barely see them. Can you see them? Yeah, I think you can. So that's layer number two. So let's do another layer. Now we're going to go even a little bit darker this time. Let's do some green gold. Oh, I was going to mix it, wasn't I, on the image? I'll do that in a second. Let's do green gold and this transparent yellow oxide. I'm going to put it on here, though. I think it's a bit old, it's a bit thick. So let's just work it a little bit on here. There we are, that's better. So it doesn't go blobby. And I'm going in one direction rather than back and forth. I like to go in one direction like that, so it's nice and even. Let's get the extra to here. Let's lay down our masks. All sorts of directions. Yeah. So what kind of things do you think you will, if you're going to do this technique uh, using Tyvek, what will what shapes will you use? Will you use um, a photograph? Will you use sort of organic shapes? To put this one. Hmm. Tell me what shapes you plan to use. I did a whole um series of these with just um, circles. So, you know, I did Tyvek circles, but also um, then I did, you know, circles and bubble wrap and I used rubber bands. There's all sort of different circles. But the main focus was the Tyvek circles. That just does not want to lay down. Okay, I'm still working with these two prints. Remember we started out with these two? I'm going to alternate them now. This was the second print that we did. So I'm going to put this one down first. Let's see what happens. I'm going to lift it a little bit. Ooh, look at that. Is that enough? Yeah, that feels like enough to me. Now we have more negative shapes. But then through the negative shapes, I can see the prints from before. I'm going to take a white piece just to get up the excess paint. So um, you've told me your favorite size. Um, so, oh, Teresa's going to use leaves, hearts, and snowflakes. I like it. Abstract, says Anne. Panoramas of buildings, says Pat. Ooh, that sounds fun. Yes, I can see doing like a panorama. Hmm. Honestly. So that's just my, you know, extra. So these two are just the spares. All right, let's repeat. Let's take these off. 
and get these. Oh, these look nice. Honestly, green gold is the bomb. My humble opinion. Okay. There we are. So then I will put that on top. So I could put it on top of this one, which is my first print before. I think that's what I'll do. Or I could put it on top of um, these sort of two extras. But I think we'll put it on top of here. And, you know, with jelly printing, I don't know about you, but when I do jelly printing, you know, I make a bazillion prints. And honestly, half of them are kind of meh <laughs> and half of them I love. So the meh ones I just keep and then use, you know, during other sessions as waste paper, and sometimes they just turn out fabulous. Okay, oh, I like this one. This one's coming through good. Okay, that was layer number three. Let's do one more. Oh, I think there's some more paint on there. So let's take this extra sheet, see if we can get some up. I'm rubbing really hard now. Um, you could also use a Baron or a Spray or roller on top of this if you wanted to, but I just kind of like feeling with my hands. Did we get anything? Oh, yes, we did. Just a few extras. So, final layer, let's do some dark. So, I'm going to use um, this chromium oxide and Payne's gray. I could do another couple of mid layers, to be honest. Um, I could just keep going and going with these masks, but I'm not going to because. Um, I suspect you actually want to go start making them yourself. So let's just um, mix this here. Payne's Grey as well is another fabulous one. Let's mix these. You could clean your Brea if you wanted to. But I don't feel the need. Just like all the colours together. Nice thin layer, rinse and repeat. Let's do that. And so there's still some yellow when the paint on here, so I bet you that's gonna um, transfer to our secondary print, right? Okay. All right, answers in the comments, who's jelly printing this afternoon? <laughs> well, who's going on Amazon to order themselves a jelly play if they don't have one? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Where's my other little thingy jiggy? There we go. Lay down, lay down, friends. Okay. Um, which one? So here are my two original prints. So I have this one here. I don't really want a lot of dark on top of this because this is going to be a lot of um, dark. So I think that's going to cover. What do I? Hmm. Should we put it on this of these two? Or do you put it on this one, which is a little more delicate? Mm, I'm going to lose some of this, though, which I really like. Oh, it's a tough decision. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. There we go. I'm doing it. Maybe I don't press too hard. See what happens. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that is really interesting. I am going to press hard. So remember, you can just pull up, right? and take a look and see how it's um, fairing and then lay it back down all the way along the edges rubbing really hard around the masks who's jelly printing this afternoon claire says she needs to order oh claire i'm so sorry claire needs to order the jelly plate and the book yeah sadly um i think we may have sent you down a rabbit hole claire i beg your pardon okay oh that, that's pretty nice that's interesting See that? Like we have these dark pieces here, and then oh, I like that. Let's do this. Is just one of our waste sheets. So, um, what kind of things do you do with your jelly prints? I use mine obviously in handmade books because, well, that's what I do. I use them as covers. I use them as pages inside. I use them as signature wrappers. Um, what do you use your jelly prints for? I am curious to know. Okay, so this is just my, oh, I like this a lot. This is my secondary print. That's looking really cool. Oops, oh, sorry, folks, it's coming in the light. Do you see it? Okay. There we are. That's really nice. And then finally, this one. Oops. 
Yeah, I'm curious to know how you use your jelly prints because I know lots of you already do it. If you don't, you probably will be now, right? Um, if you look through my live videos, I've done a few different jelly printing sessions. One with magazines, one with um, plastic bags as texture. So now I'm going to get some nice positive shapes. I need to decide which one. So this one I think is finished for now. I could put it on this one. I could put it on this one. Gosh, I'm going to put it onto this one. Let's see what happens. I love the serendipity of this because you just, I mean, you can plan to a certain extent, right? But with placement and color, but you can't um, generally predict exactly how it will turn out. Or maybe some people do. Oh, I like that. Oops. Okay, that one came out nice too. I really like that. So um, that is the technique. Let me clean up a little bit and I'll show you a book I made and also how I enhance these. Let's just um, wipe off our brayer because these are expensive and you don't want it to um, get dried paint on it like, like what mine has. Let's just clean this up. Um, what do you make? Let's see. Books, pages. Can you press the masks? Um, if Claire says, could you press the mask you're peeling off to make a single imprint sound a card? Yes, I guess you could, Claire. Might be. Um, let's try it. So what I would do, Claire, this is a good question, is I would actually use the jelly print. I would lay down my, I would make sure this was clean. Lay down my paper or your card. So yeah, you would do that with leaves as well or anything. And so yes, you could lay this down. Use the excess paint. I would probably put an extra piece of the top and go in with a brayer to get a firm imprint. So yeah, you can do this um, when you're doing uh, leaf printing too, because all the lovely texture on the back of the leaf, and it seems a shame to waste all that paint, right? Oh, nice. Oh, <laughs> that's really cute. I like that. So we should do that. We should do that with our extras, right? So. Let's say we have this one right here. So this is why we do these things together on a Thursday, because people just think of ideas. Lay these over the top. Oh, this is going to be lovely. Thanks, Claire. I think it's what's called a hive mind, right? Mm -hmm. Like that. OK, let's see how that looks. This sheet of the top. Of course, now they won't probably come out quite as nice. Hopefully, they will. Christina. Oh, Amy said, actually, Amy makes a good point. Depends on the paint you're using. Yes, because I'm using the golden opens, I have longer drying time. Thank you, Amy. Good point. Let's remove the, my babies. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's really cute. I really like that. So, yes, if you were using um, regular acrylics, the paint might have dried by now. So there is my ooh, fourth or fifth layer. Okay. All right. Um, what was I doing? I was cleaning this off. I like that distracted. I'm going to show you um, a sort of half-finished book. That I have. Let's move this out of the way. Here's the book. And also, um, so here's, here's one I did, a couple I did yesterday. Um, these aren't finished. You can add, I generally go in and add things to them. So you can go in with any kind of medium once they're dry and um, enhance them. Go a bit more light. So you could use water soluble crayons like this and go in and sort of add some, some sort of 
highlights if you wanted to, like this. Activate those with your wipes or with a Lino paintbrush. Kind of wet those a little bit. You could go in with marker, you know, outline it. I mean, this looks a little ridiculous, but you know what I mean. You can go in and outline it. Um, use the Lyra crayons. These are water soluble. Go in and make marks or write. Um, you can also go in with pencils. So watercolor pencils or Prisma pencils. Okay, well that obviously needs sharpening. Go in with Prisma pencils and you know, so you want to darken this up. Or just darken up around the edges. So these are just kind of a jumping off point. You could go crazy. Oops. Um, so yeah, once you say, say Pat did her skyline, then you can go in and add lots of details. Um, you could go in and add sort of whimsical pen work if you wanted to. You know, say you wanted to go in and so make it kind of whimsical and do like stripes. Like you name it, you can do whatever you want to it um, once it's dried. So, um, you know, the world is your oyster, folks. That looks a little crazy, but um, I think you get the idea. Um, oops, that doesn't go in there. Mickey will kill me. I'm putting things in the wrong place. So here is a book I started a while ago, and it was actually in my unfinished project pile, which are now very nicely organized, by the way. <laughs> can I just say? Um, it's a type of accordion book. And it uses these, um, sorry, the light is kind of on the, it uses um, the, the, the prints that I made with the jelly plate using the same method. And then I've just outlined some of these with pen, pencil. It's not finished, but um, it's on its way. So now you can kind of see those shapes, outline them. So it's an accordion right now. Who knows what it will morph into? Um, here's another unfinished project that I found using these. Sort of made these grids, which are kind of fun. And so I did use the stencils for these with black paint. I made like a nice background and then did these sort of four stencil, um, four um, quadrants. I did a similar thing on this paper. So it's just, you know, it's play. Lots and lots of play, folks. 